Hi. I'm trying to figure out where that sound's coming from. You're My computer live is live up. streaming. Yep. I'll, I'll, I'll get that in a second. Uh, I should probably go get that right now. Hold on one second. My live stream is on. on the so Jared happens to also have the live stream up on his browser, which is playing back on the giant speakers that we have. And now it's off. So hopefully we're good now. Crossing camera. That's what happens, that's what happens when I turn off the screen so that's it doesn't That's what happens reflect. when we're live. Well, I was like, is, is that Todd's speaker? Well, I'm like, why is it coming from over there? Yeah. <laughs> Jared Poland, Frono's Photo. Dot com and this is Raw Talk episode 250. Oof. You would think after 250 episodes we wouldn't fuck up right off the rip. You'd think. But You'd it's be all wrong. It, it Very wrong. doesn't matter because I, I remember back to Raw Talk episode one. That's For right. Me. And then three. Were you on two or three? I was on two. And Todd was on Todd three? Todd was on three. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible idea. Oh, Terrible man, idea. those early Raw Talks. So, yeah, 250 is a lot of years. It's 250 weeks. That's uh, that's like four years and a half. Wow. I mean, five. five. Yeah. Five years. Yeah. Wow. So we have a busy, 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 busy Raw Talk. Still not called a Z7, if you can even see what that says. I don't know where people are getting Z from. We have lots of stuff to talk about. We were in Hawaii. We have the EOS R we're going to be talking about, which is sitting right here. We've got Frover time, which comes after the fact. So when you have questions about this... We're going to ask them after the episode. You get to ask them. We get to answer them in Frover Time. So if you're new and you're only listening on the audio, then just know that Frover Time is only for people watching live on YouTube. If you'd like to do some super mix super chats just to buy Todd a Red Bull and chips because he <coughs> forgot to buy his Red Bull and chips Son before the wow. show, uh, you can throw them in there, and we, I guess we will see them after the show. And thank you, or sorry, when we get into Frover Time and give you all of that information. Yeah. Sound good, Stephen? Yeah, let's introduce Dan real quick behind the switcher. Oh, well, we've got Stephen over here. <laughs> I forgot to introduce Stephen. Yes. Todd's over there. Uh, uh, angle. See, there Dan's he is. too worried about Dan's too worried about his shot. And then Dan. Dan. There he is. There Take your time. He is. One day we'll have a button and and something and then uh, get we just off need to intro everyone right away i forgot every show i forgot this is the one week i didn't remind you i forgot dan get off of your angle dan nobody loves to live you. on his shot he no, loves to live on no, his nobody shot. cares about that oh he's gonna do it again isn't he no i saw him just hit a button that's the switcher oh good good yeah. that's why he doesn't have a microphone or anything um so let's start with something that happened while i was in uh when we landed in dallas fort worth Yes. Other than it taking 10 minutes to go from terminal to terminal because they have a long and winding train, which was long Huge and winding airport. train. Luckily, Huge we airport. had like 40 minutes between flights. Yeah. So we go into the bathroom, not together, one after the well, other. I think we did go together, actually. Right. So I had to so pee, I... and they had a ledge. So I put my vlogging camera on top of the ledge. And, and you were still vlogging, right? It was still recording? Still vlogging straight down. <laughs> yeah. And then You um, got your macro lens out for yep. that. Yep. yep, had to get extra mm -hmm. clothes for that. And then <laughs> I walked out to go get some lunch for the flight. And then 15 minutes later, I realized, <gasps> you left it. Where the Where's my vlogging camera? I'm shocked that you did that. That is. Yeah, well, it's because I had a cold and I was tired. You and weren't right. Cranky. You weren't right in the head. So then I'm like, oh, shit. And I run back to the bathroom and it's not there. Then I f see the janitor. I'm like, excuse me, Mr. Janitor. Did yeah, you man. Do you by any chance? For, no, it was more. We're in Texas, so we're close to the Mexican border. Hey, so yeah, man. I don't hear you. No, that's Elvis. Elvis wasn't in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe playing on the radio. Uh, Look, Stephen's biting his lip like we said something wrong. I don't know. I'm, uh -huh. I'm good. He's just waiting for the censors to get upset. Yes. Um, you remember the censors from uh, Good Morning Vietnam? The two brothers, the twins. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Uh, I, I, I didn't find your camera there, hippie. Yeah, so he had the camera, and he handed it to me, and I was like, Whoosh. Wow, he actually had it. On his cart, underneath something. Thank And every God. time we fly or go anywhere, like if we leave the bag for one second, you're like, you got that? You got the bag? You I, good? I messed up. And it's like one time. We both forgot, because I didn't even know you even had That's the That's not your fault. There. You weren't with me. You were at McDonald's. Hell yeah. Uh, <laughs> McD's breakfast? Oh, yes. Uh, mm. God, I'll never my, forget when we were over in where in Germany, Germany. England. like our our biggest oh. our biggest plan was to get McDonald's. 
That was at Heathrow, I think. Yeah. It might have been Heathrow, yeah. And you guys right. went and got that and a really good panning. We went on a journey to get that shot. And I was yeah. at sushi eating terrible, expensive sushi. Oh, yeah. I yep. got the one panning shot. Yeah. Crushed that. Yeah. Killed so it. So I had a cold, which sucked. It got the, I got it the day before. I think you had more than a cold. AIDS? <laughs> I just mean you were messed up. <laughs> yeah. I took some Dayquil before the flight. I bought that at the thing. Yeah, it wasn't simply like the common cold. You were you were. I wasn't up. good for like, well, a week. But the the two days because when we landed in Hawaii, we'll talk about more of the flight in a second. When I landed in Hawaii, I was not in a a good headspace. My head hurt. Yeah. I didn't. And then we had to drive an hour in a van. If, and then as soon as we got to the hotel, I was like, right to my room, and I went and sat in the bathtub. Or something, because I think I had a fever. The woman, uh, the flight attendant, I'm like, as a mother, could you touch my forehead, please? Your head was hot. and Because yeah. you, you asked me to touch it, too. I did. She's yeah. like, you're really hot. He's like, touched- tell me about it. Speaking of hot, I got to sit in first class. <laughs> Great segue. Yeah. Speaking of hot, uh, I, I, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you guys the name. What? <laughs> oh, that's me in first class. Yeah, I'm like Stephen. I thought it was Casey Neistat. My bad. Yeah, no, it's not. It's I. Uh, there's Stephen in the back of the plane. Technically, that's with, from the with first the flight. Yeah, he was in, he was with the peasants. But I, I, Canon didn't pay for the flight. Sorry, pay for first class. They of course pay for the flights. I just chose to use miles instead and took a reimbursement of half the fl- you know one way. Yeah. Um, because the I best, used my the best miles. Part that right there is up. that lady looking at you while you're talking to your camera right there. Yep. Yeah, she was. A, what are you doing over there? Mean. It was the this right is trip first though, class. to upgrade to first class. Well, it was an eight-hour because you had the pod. Yeah, I had a, I had a pod. I got to yep. lay down. So this is what I'm titling the vlog. This is good though. It's called the Hawaii vlog. Stephen doesn't like the name of the title. The, the vlog. I don't care. I think it's funny for days. I don't really care. I just know people will take it the wrong way. So the vlog title, is, which is coming soon, is called "Flying First Class to Hawaii." Thanks, Canon. Uh, I guarantee the first <laughs> and the, you know, the most liked comment will be, you got paid, see, you shill, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that's great. Sell I love out. that title. Yeah. I love that title. That's why I'm going to go with that title. I'm I just go- want people to be clear, it, to be clear that you did not get paid by Canon. It it says it, it, I, I'm telling you, put a card right at the front of it. Like, And by the way, Canon did not pay for this. I say it really early on. Dan, where do I say it? Do you remember? It is pretty early on. I'm just like, oh, by the way, Canon didn't pay for first class. I did. You upgraded. I upgraded yeah. using my miles, 67,000 points. Oh, my yeah. God. That's a lot. It's not that many. That's pretty uh, it's a amount. lot for the average person. Yeah. Well, for the average person, yes. But it takes me like almost more than a year to, uh, to save up 67,000 points. Because a round trip points. is what, 25,000 miles? No, no, no. If, you go to, if, if you get it really inexpensive, I've seen L.A. really expensive for 12,500 miles each way. Really oh, yeah. cheap. Yeah, oh, I mean 2,500 round trip. Yeah. 25,000. 25,000. 25, yeah. uh, that's if you're lucky. But when yeah. I went to Paris, it was Paris wasn't bad. It was 35,000 for a regular peasant seat each, each way. Mm. So that wasn't bad at all. And right it all depends what time of year you go, because I had to pay for Disney, and it happened to be a very busy week in Disney, and that's like 50,000 points. Mm. Yeah. So. Great talk. We get to Hawaii. We, we are going to show up to dinner the first night, right? Yeah. And what are we told? Well, we talked to Rob Luckett, a Canon rep, and he's like, yeah, you guys are good. First of all, we're in our bathing suits. We're, we're just we, we're in the pool. We just were in the pool. We're hanging out. He's like, guys, it's a very casual dinner. Just hang out. You know, you can wear that. You're fine. Just wear your bathing suit. I'm like, you sure? It's not like a fancy dinner. No, no. We show up. Everybody's in like suit and tie or yes. like a nice button up. I'm like, oh, great. So, so this is Perfect. how I show up. T-shirt. Surprise. Nope. Nope. What? A towel from the pool, holding my shirt and shoes, no shirt on, walk into the room, get stopped by the Canon people who are they hired for the event who don't know me, by the way. And they go, um, where's your name tag? You need your name tag. I'm like, yeah, the room's about eight miles. I shaved it in my chest hair. Yeah. The, na- the, the room's like eight miles that way because it was a, t- took forever to walk to your rooms. And it I'm did. like... I'm not getting it. She's like, you need it. I'm like, uh-huh. It was probably a 10 or 15 minute round trip Do back to the room. you know who I am? Basically. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And she didn't. <laughs> she should have. So that well, didn't work. How'd that work out at the end? Oh, fine. I walked in, got dressed, and stood oh. there. Oh. Well, and then Jared decided to wear your name tag like on the back of your shirt the rest of the trip. The back of my shirt. Yeah. Because Stephen wouldn't let me put it on my crotch where I put it originally. <laughs> Hey, let me give a shout Someone's out to Sammy, to Sammy from Canon. He's probably watching right now. Sammy, what's up? Sammy's the best guy 
Um, he was great with Cannon. Uh, he he was really cool. So big shout out to Sammy. Uh, speaking of what happened in the pool when we, you and I were in the pool that first night, first afternoon, evening. Ah, uh, how you met a lady? Is that what I you're did. talking about? I oh. did. It was funny. What was her name? Maddie. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <what's laughs> ironic. Yeah, well, I was sitting there talking to Steven, and this girl was on the other side of the pool. She laughed at something I said, so I'm like, oh, well, she's inviting me. She was just being nice. She was being nice. Right, <laughs> right, right. She was being nice. And then I'm just like, oh, so how, how long are you here? And, and she didn't allude to the fact that she's not here with, like, a boyfriend. Because, you know, you think she's with a boyfriend. She's like, oh, no, I'm here with my family. I'm like, ding. I'm like, sweet. And and then we, I got her number and stuff. I don't think you met back up with her, though, no, right? No, she was busy. She busy. Was, yeah. Busy. I was like, let's go uh, take a walk at midnight under the stars, stars. and the <laughs> moon because, you Long know. Long walks on the beach. I mean, it's, it is Hawaii, so I can yeah. use that line. Yeah. She, she liked that. But I was she passed was cool. out by 9 o'clock. She was o'clock. like, with you or the other guy? There was no other guy. <laughs> no. There was no other guy. The bathing suit crushed for days. Mm. I had multiple women hit on me because of my bathing suit, including one woman who lived in Hawaii who's like, would you, she's like, what did she say to me? Do you have the exact quote? The uh, woman at the bar. Oh, man. I'd have to look it up. God, so you, if I could chop your head off, you'd be perfect. Yeah, no, she, she said. said something like, that is so interesting. I'm like, what, my hair, my shirt, or my bathing suit? Because, you know, I'm just so generally interesting. Mm, yeah. But... Uh, she gave yeah, me her totally number. Was. She's like, well, if you're looking to hang out with some a good group of ladies, I'm like, really? Yeah, she asked, what yes. are you? And she, she goes, what are you? Yeah. What's your name? I, it's Barb. <laughs> I forget her name, actually. And then, you'd like this, Todd. We get out from one of the canon events, and I want to go to the bar to see if they have cake. Because I wanted cake. Yeah. I walk weird. up to the bar. They close at 11. It's like 1030, 1035. There's just a girl sitting there herself drinking. All right. So I sit and next to her. It was actually our, Steven. I'm like... I'm like, you think you, get, you think they have cake here? And she's like, I don't know, maybe. So I look at the menu, and I'm like, they do have cake. Do you want to split a piece? She's like, all right. And I'm like, so why are you sitting here alone? She goes, oh, my boyfriend cheated on me. Oh, I'm like, he Jesus. cheated on you while he was here? She's like, well, no, not technically. His girl, The girl that he was sleeping with, she used different words, called the room. I'm like, first off, how does somebody get the number to the room and call? And... And I was like, that's bad. I'm like, so where's your boyfriend now? She's like, playing his PlayStation in the room. I'm like, wait a second. Who is his name? Todd. I'm like, like, your boyfriend brings a PlayStation. Because you know Destiny 2 uh, uh, thing just came out. I I didn't know that because I don't play games. Mm -hmm. Your boyfriend, I'm like, you've dodged a bullet. Your boyfriend brings to Hawaii. She's like, I'm hot. Look at me. And he brings a PlayStation. I'm like, yeah, I could could attest to that. And one thing led to another. She's like, what's your room number? I'm like, you're not coming back to my room. You're too vulnerable right now. Good on you. Well, she came back to my room anyway. And then... (laughs) 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 I thought you tried to justify that. Can't lie. Terrible. But nothing happened at all. Because sure. nothing was going to no nothing, nothing was happened. Go, nothing was going to happen because that is a mistake waiting to happen. You do not do that on whose part? <laughs> Both. <laughs> no, I wasn't gonna. I wasn't gonna do that because I, I can't do that. I'm sure there's plenty of guys who'd be like, "Hey, girl, forget about your." I couldn't imagine. Actually, being Todd, in shoes, tell us though. what regular guys would say. You know what? Yeah, you would come say? on. Let's uh, forget about that loser. <laughs> Let's escape into um, uh, lust and love up in my room. You know I got first class room paid by Canon. <laughs> Speaking of getting paid by Canon, and then we'll move on to some other stuff. Did we show all the clips we wanted to show, or are we showing? Is dancing coming up? Uh, you can talk about dancing now if you want, no. or after your little tote I'm bag. Talk about my Canon tote bag for sure. Totes my goats. Is this where all the money came in? Well, this is so right. we we get to our room, and I'm like. Oh, so this is how Cannon's going to pay us. That suitcase, I think, was in there, too, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, the suitcase was in that bag. The suitcase yeah, was in exactly. the bag. So yeah. I show up. Just like that. And they're like, Jared, open. this is for you. Jared, make sure you check your bag. <laughs> we open it up, and then this was left from Cannon. Oh, my gosh. That's got to be like Well, there was actually some more, but we spent some on the trip. Yeah. So there's that. There was a water bottle, which... Is this your? This is yours because I left mine. Uh, and that also had money inside it. And it has cannon yep, on it. Yep. Stuffed money. A towel to wipe away. Well, that anyway, never Which mind. Which actually has money in it. <laughs> Why is it so crunchy? You washed it. <laughs> <laughs> and the best thing, well, there's a notebook. He needed something after that girl came up to the room. <laughs> a notebook <laughs> and a cannon oh, pen. Oh, man. 
head. And then the last thing, they gave us a calculator and we're well, like, you can count all the money they gave you. This is to this is to make sure that you account for every yes. dollar yep. that they left you in your room so yep. that you can let people know that Canon spends a lot of money on you. I've played this joke out now 8,000 times. I was going to say, you've said that joke so like many times. Like 73 times. times. Who did you get that joke from? Who did I get it from? Me. Oh, you gave that? Yeah. You made that joke? Crush that. I'll steal that. Uh, so then I got, and then Stephen had that great joke. Um, okay. Ladies hitting on me. Dancing. Dancing? Yeah. All right, let's get to dancing. Cue that clip. We're at dinner. Well, he w- should you play out the one part? What part? The actual music from the dancing clip, the edited version. We have music? We have that actual clip from the vlog. Okay, let's see it. Let's play it. Roll that clip from the vlog. And I look over here, right? Yeah, there it is. It's all in the hips. It's all in the hips. Let me tell you what happened. Let me tell you how this came about. Um, I wanted to get up there while the other hula dancers were going, but I just didn't. And then there's a woman. She comes on stage. She goes, "If anybody would like, if anybody would like to, v- <laughs> as soon as she said, v- didn't have to ask me twice. I was right up on stage, and Done. she's like, "Oh, you don't have to take your shirt off." I'm like, "I just did." You, I think, took your shirt off as you were going on stage. Yeah. So my shirt's off. That's and I'm weird. up on stage, and then a couple of people join, and then I'm just like, and then it was really good because they're like, "Apple, pineapple, something, thrust," and I don't know. I th- I would hip thrust over and over and over again. Look people at that liked badunk. it. They- Look at that badonka donk. Yeah, I, I got a nice badunk. You've been, wor- you've been working out. <laughs> look at that. Look like, look at look, look, unfortunately, it looks like there's a full-on coconut in your stomach. <laughs> <laughs> you put the lime in the coconut. You put the... Anyway, so that, that's, that, that was that. Any excuse. It was funny because we saw Elliot, who's the vice president of Canon USA, on the plane on the way to L.A., and he said something. And I'm on like, the way hey. back. Yeah, I'm like, how's it going? And he's, like, he's like, yeah, it's going well. He's like... Don't make me release that clip. I'm like, oh, Elliot, I already released it as soon as I did it. I've already posted it, so you, you can't blackmail me mm-hmm. on that one. Oh, you wanted me to Have film that right me? away. I'm like, like st- did you get it? Did you get it? Actually, I didn't even ask you. You just did. Well, because I knew you would want it. I and then you tried it. to give me your phone mid-dancing, and I'm like, I got it. I'm yeah, on This got, episode I'm of Look at Me. Yeah, look at me. Look at me. Uh, what else? Oh, there were other YouTubers. Do we have a clip about that? Uh, we don't have that clip here. So we'll have to wait for the vlog. To yeah, see the vlog is coming soon. We 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 did meet other YouTubers, and what was funny about there were there were Instagrammers because Canon brought some Instagrammers like that have influence. I Smart guess. Smart move. Yeah, I guess so. I didn't really know them. Not that that matters. But I was in the pool swimming. Yeah. By myself, you were editing, and there were the two Instagramming girls that were sitting on the side of the pool in their ass bikinis because you could see that they're. I mean, that's all they showed was like cheeks. And they're sitting there with like fruit and stuff, having a selfie session at the edge of the pool. So I swim to right behind them and I start doing this. Oh my God. <laughs> I start pointing at, off in the distance and they look at me, Todd. Can you, can you, you know what they said? Can you please get out of our shot? No, no they were just like, <laughs> oh, 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 there's How something long? floating in the pool. Can you somebody get, <laughs> get the net out? <laughs> How long did this photo shoot go on Dude, for? They were shooting for 20 minutes. Oh, with I believe iPhones. it. I believe it. It's like, come on, you iPhones on a Canon trip. Yeah, Instagrammers. That's that's what they do. Jared's annoyed by those girls. The guy that takes his shirt off to dance Hulu in front of everybody. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, it's much different. Than I'm not just sitting on the edge going, "Look at me, look at me." I was up on stage saying, "Look at me, look at me." <laughs> there's a big difference. Uh, all right, time for me to show the the print that came in the mail while I was away. Yeah, let's. Do we that. got a lot more with 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 the uh, the vlog. The vlog's twenty two minutes of goodness, of that'll looking be, at me. That'll be epicness. Fun. So, oh, Stephen, <laughs> do you want to talk about this while I get it? Uh, sure. This is this is a giant print. Uh, we talked about this on the last show. Yeah, we talked about this about the, two the weeks ago, back in the day. And Jared got a high res scan finally of the photo. This is the factory. Uh, this is what from nineteen sixty. When's this from, Jared? No, it's probably hard there to you get go. that. There you go. Move that to is the other your side, angle. Jared. There you go. A little higher. There you okay. go. You can kind of see it there. And you also decide to print this on the metal finish, which is yeah. really cool. It's a black and white print. It's it got looks that way metallic better in finish. Person. The metal is actually showing through. It looks through. really nice. It looks really cool. It's big. It's 40 by 50. It's giant. It's 40 by 50. Uh, we're going to hang it up in the lobby. I think it's a really cool piece to showcase. I'm coming. I'm coming. And the funny part is that this actually almost looks... The exact same 
<laughs> the factory really doesn't look different. Well, so we talked about it last week, but yeah. this is a 40 by 50 from Adorama Picks. It's a the metal is showing through. So yep. I chose to Just do that, that to give it the vintage look. Uh, and the print looks freaking incredible. I get my prints at Adorama Picks. They they're not actually currently a sponsor, but I do have an affiliate code which doesn't seem to work anymore. But it's uh, it was adoramapicks.com slash fro or http semicolon slash 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 Well, what's what's cool is that they used to only do what up to like twenty by thirty. Yeah, now they do forty by sixty, which is awesome, and they do true panoramic too. So this print, the actual negative, came out to being like forty by fifty two or something, and I didn't want to crop. That's weird. I didn't want to crop because <laughs> on the bottom right hand corner it has that number forty eight. So what I ended up doing is, and I wanted to keep the left-hand side because it had all the old cars. So I cropped it. Is the 48 the date? I, no, that was probably uh, negative 48 or okay. something. What is the date on there? The date is 8-24-60. 60, okay, cool. Yeah, 8, so August 24th, 1960, because that's, that's awesome. the day I looked at the image was in 2018. Yeah. So I cut out the 48 and moved it over in Photoshop and placed it exactly where it was on the edge and then had it printed. Cool. So it looks awesome. It looks great. It looks nice. really cool. I think that I think a black and white image like that looks great with that metallic finish showing through, the I actual have, metal showing through. Because we've never really tried that because it's, it's very, it's different. Uh, it's very it's different. different. You need a specific image. And I have to figure out what to do with my image from home of, the, of my house. Which I think you should do the same thing. I may, though, leave it in the vintage color black and white, which is kind of sepia, p purple, uh, yeah, pinkish. Yeah, it's that I like that looking. feel of it because that is an 8 by 10 glass slide negative. Very cool. And it's that was from, what, 1901? 1901. Yeah. <sighs> Tax day didn't exist. It's, it's August 15th, 1901. I don't think that was uh, officially ta – I don't think tax day became a thing until the 20s. No idea. Hmm. Me either. I just made that up. That's weird. That's uh, weird. <laughs> Daily Fro, don't forget Daily Fro. I've been, I, I've got some hot ones, some hot ish that I've been doing with the Daily Fro since I came back. I took six days off uh, while I was away, just because I was tired and and girls were hitting on me nonstop, so I didn't have time. That's because Canon paid for them. <laughs> Shit, I never thought of that. <laughs> Is that why they kept saying EOSR? EOSR. I'm like, why do you keep saying EOSR? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, so <laughs> actually, tell me more e about yourself and what do you think about the EOSR? Actually, it was more like EOS. -er -er. <laughs> are they calling it EOS or EOS? <laughs> or were they pirates? EOSR. It's, to me, it's EOS. Yeah. It's I'm just curious. curious. I'm and curious it's not, what Canon is calling it's it. It's EOS. EOS? That's, it's the EO. Yes, EOS. EOS. But I called EOS. I've always called it EOS. EOS Alon 2E was what I first had. Yeah. So we get into photo news now? Yeah, I think so. Hey, let's roll music that we don't do anymore because that was like episode retrospective into like 60. Yeah. Episode 60 when we had a, a plug from, uh, what was that, Audio Blocks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You ready? Yeah, I mean, I was born ready, Steven. Pro mm -hmm. Photo, they announced the new B10, a new studio flash system designed that is small and lightweight, but very powerful. I'm putting up my finger to interrupt you. Is that That's okay? Weird. Yeah. You know, what's funny sure. is we're not going to talk about this story because they didn't send us a lot of money or send us on their trip to Alaska. You know, yeah, let's just skip this. That they did with a lot of other influencers. <laughs> uh, no, really skip it. Describing <laughs> it as about the size of a standard zoom lens, Pro Photo says the new flash has five times the power of the average speed light. The wireless flash weighs in at about 3.3 pounds, or 1.5 kilograms, and has a recycling time of 1 20th of a second, up to two seconds. Uh, what I like about this one is the fact that it can double as a dimmable, continuous LED for both video work, or you can simply use it as a modeling light. It's also bicolor. It allows for temperature adjustments from 3,000 to 6,500 Kelvin mm. to match that ambient light. So I think that's really cool that you can be on location, use it for video work, or again, use it for specifically photography. Um, existing How much are they paying you to talk about this, Stephen? <laughs> existing ProPhoto users will also love the fact that it's uh, compatible with over 120 current ProPhoto light shaping tools, and it has Bluetooth connectivity and that can be controlled completely from the phone, which is nice because you can adjust the power but still be behind the camera. I would like to say, Pro Photo, if you are watching this or if anybody wants to send this. Uh, I'd love to get one. We would like to play with this. Yeah. And in the future, if you'd like to take an influencer somewhere, you could take Steven to Alaska. <laughs> there you go. But make yeah. sure the check is nice and big. <laughs> yep. Now, speaking of money, it does come at a sure steep price, $1,600 for one unit. It's a lot of money, but it is a great looking system. Uh, and they say it will be available soon. No does specific it come date with that backpack? yet. Uh, I think it, it does come like with it. it. Yeah, I'm That's pretty nice. sure it comes with the backpack. Awesome, which is cool. 
Do you know what that reminds me of? What? The backpack dance that you can't do. Still can't do it. Still nope. can't do it. Nope. Still not funny. Moving on. <laughs> and then we've got Fuji. This reminds me of your dancing in Hawaii. Terrible. Dan's not even on me right exactly. now. Exactly. That's Fuji perfect. has revealed. Dan, you're right on the money. They revealed their new spec out XT3. They actually revealed this when we were in Hawaii. We debated on doing a preview video, but we just didn't have time. Well, we wanted to get the preview video of the Canon done. And we there's so many girls, so little so time. Many girls, so, much so many money cameras, to spend. <laughs> so many women that want to ask me about the ESOR. And we also we got the specs right before the announcement, <laughs> so there really was just no time. It came down to that. That's correct. But top level specs for this camera include a new 26.1 BSI X Trans CMOS sensor. With no OLPF, there were no trans. maximum sharpness. Base ISO now goes down to 160 instead of the average 200, the first for the XT lineup. And it goes up to 12,800, Todd's favorite. Yep. And continuous shooting speed is now 11 frames there per second with the mechanical shutter, which is awesome. And up to 30 frames per second blackout free with the electronic shutter in what they're calling sports mode, which is a 1.25x crop. On top of a 1.5x crop. Exactly. Now, autofocus has been greatly improved with the phase detection area now covering the entire frame, they say, uh, along with the low light shooting capability going from negative 1 to negative 3 EV, which is a big thing for Fuji. It's a welcomed upgrade. Uh, the camera's phase detection and IAF have been improved with uh, both now being available in AFC modes and something that I've wanted for a while in my Sony's. Eye detection is now available in video mode, which I think is great because mm. you can be shooting at, say, like, if if... Canon had it available. It'd be at F1.2 and eye detect. It's awesome. coming soon in Canon in, in 2025. It'll, yeah, it'll be in Canon 20 coming years soon, later. guys. It's coming. <laughs> uh, now, with the more beefy processor, the X-T3 allows for film simulation modes. Oh, my God. For now... <laughs> I like pulling simulation. out the button. That's the best part To now part be right there. applied during continuous shooting before you couldn't do that, and it now borrows the newer color chrome effect uh, from its bigger brother, the GFX 50S. And the new monochrome adjustment feature allows for changing of warm and cool tones in black and white images. Yay! I think that's kind of cool. Great. Shoot raw. Thank you. <laughs> and video specs, this thing's beefed out. It'll shoot with 12 stops of dynamic range and F-log at 4K at up to 60 frames per second internally oh, at 10-bit 420 and 4K 60 externally at 10-bit 422, a first for any APS-C camera. And then codec-wise, it can shoot in H.265, which I love, for smaller file sizes and better compression. And then the outside of the camera generally keeps the same body as the X-T2, but the EVF's a little farther out now, just a few millimeters. And what I don't like is that they didn't fix the grip issue from the X-T. The X, it's still like a very small grip. You don't like something about the Fuji? I, I, did I say that are out loud? You gonna handle, did I say that like, loud? Are you going to be able to handle the comments? Shit, where's your helmet? My helmet's downstairs. I need that helmet now. Yeah. No, we both I do. should have put on our helmets Personally, before. personally, I don't love the grip on the X-H1, X-T1, too, but I do love the X-H1 grip. I think that's a solid feeling camera. That comes from a DSLR user, though, so it might be a little different. Um, it does also have a built-in headphone jack, which is really nice. You don't need that grip like the X-T2. And the biggest feature it has dual SD card slots. Cool. Just like the X-T2. So Nothing when's your full there. frame come out? We'll see. We'll see what happens. They're not coming out with a full frame. Yeah. They're not doing it. Yeah, rumors. They're not the rumors. Now, this thing comes in at $1,500 for the body only, and it'll be available starting next week. Uh, I do think this is a really specced out camera. It seems, seems pretty how solid. How will it work in the real world? How will it work in the real world is always the question. The I don't know. I'm going to have to wait for Fro's real world review to find out. That people will shit on for sure. Yep. But uh, hopefully we get the X-T3 in our hands soon, and we can try it out. Yeah, hopefully we'll be the last to review it. <laughs> <laughs> Save the best for last. Now people are like, oh, this is old news. Why are you reporting on this? It's like, everybody else already did it. I'm like, cool. We, we, what was like a I month and a half later? My, uh, maybe two months later after great. the official. We I weren't can't wait that to put late. my Ronin S review out five years later. Yeah. And then Nailed it. Apple has unveiled the new line of iPhone X smartphones, not the iPhone X, with the XS. The 10s Max and Max. the more affordable 10R. Er. Now the new camera phones feature all new an all new backside sensor along with a big new feature that they're calling the depth of field slider, uh, capturing more sophisticated bokeh. The computational photography will allow users to adjust the aperture value after the fact, all the way from f1.4 to f16 yeah. with a simple slide, just like they're <laughs> doing right here. So you know what's funny about that though? I was thinking about it. It's just the background bokeh. 
It's yeah. just the background focus. So it's not like you're changing your f stop from one four on the eyeball. You're not changing. You're not getting the de- f- depth. Exactly. You're just getting different. And I'm not downplaying this at all because when I was having pho yesterday, <laughs> I took a, a portrait mode photo from a distance and of of a glass, you know, the, of the counter, and then the girl in the background's out of focus. I'm like, that's cool. Well, it's, it's cool. <laughs> But if you ever blew one of those up to even an 8x12, you would sit there and be like, yeah, I can see all the artifacts around there. Yeah. I, I wish this is. So, I wish like Lightroom CC could build this into their iPhone app. I think that would be incredible. Well, I think, I and think, shoot DNG. I'm I, I pretty sure that the next versions that are coming out of Lightroom will allow you to take advantage of the, the data that's coming the in from mode Canon. And yeah. that's, that would so be that really cool. So that you can cool. tweak and... Ha- I mean, because the, how sharp a DNG from the phone is compared to that... Super compressed oh, JPEG. God. It really the iPhone screwed. JPEG is so mushy. It is mushy. Remember when I did that concert? Yeah. Where I shot both. It was night and day. Yeah, the thing about this this feature, though, when you look at it, that guy is lit really well. Like, there's a lot that of too. separation between, yep. like, him and the background. I feel like it's that thing, Jared, that you do in, in, in Photoshop where you isolate the subject, and it's not always perfect, and then it... You know, you can do whatever to the background or pull them out, and I and I feel like if it's a it's a poor, if it's poorly lit, how well does it well separate? Yeah, well, do you need a lot of rim lighting to separate you and your subject to really true. for it to eat, work? The other thing I saw is that when uh, MKBHD was showing his hands on with it from from uh, Cupertino, as he's swiping through the gallery of images that they have, the headshots are all in the exact same position. So the people are in the same position in the frame, whether it's vertical, or horizontal, and. It's just the that it's nobody moving. They're looking at the camera. They're looking off camera. Yeah. It's a setup shot, and then people are like, "But they used it for the cover of Time Magazine." I'm like, "Cool." The, yes, it's because the subject is just sitting there. Is that because it's in portrait mode and you have to be that well, in certain portrait distance mode, you have away? To be a specific distance, or what they recommend at least. And I don't know how you're doing. You're not doing portrait mode of action. This no, is I, not going to be able to do agree. it. Yeah, but I will say that the technology is still amazing. The stuff that they can do, with the, right? And I think mm-hmm. you will start seeing that show up in. I'm going to say it. Real cameras. Yeah. At some point, we saw it with the Arsenal, which raised like three or four million dollars. It's an AI-powered computer that sits on top of your camera and talks to your camera and allows you to add extra features. They will start building that stuff into this. Uh, yeah. I, I'm really surprised that they're actually giving you real aperture values in the slider, uh, that they didn't simplify it like Apple tends to do. Like if my mom were to take a photo and she saw F14 to F16, she'd be like, what the hell is this? If, you know, Steven, if we saw it, we would understand that. Why but is this number? You would think that it would go from like less blur to more blur and you can adjust it that way, that way very simply. But do you yeah. see that Phil Schiller was getting shit for saying Boca? Yeah, yeah. You know what? I don't give a we shit. We all pronounce it differently. It. I don't care how people what do you pronounce call it, it. Steven? I say Boca. Yeah, what do you call it, Steven? Boca. Exactly. Todd, what do you... Um, he doesn't even know. Boca. Boca. How do you spell that? B-O-K-E-H. Right? C- correct. I didn't ring the bell. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I do think it's a great learning tool for yeah. l- teaching people the fundamentals of photography. Now yep. they're going to understand the aperture value and what that is affecting. And I also wonder... How do they know what your critical focus is in that photo? Like you had brought up, it's only adjusting strictly the black background blur. How do they know what is the foreground and what subject you're focusing on? Uh, it's called science, Stephen. It still blows my mind. Magic. Yeah. It's called that perfect rim light. And uh, price-wise, they're getting pretty expensive. The new phones are now available for pre-order, and they'll hit shelves next week. For the price of an X-T3. $1,000 for the 10s and $1,100 for the 10s Max. Again, this is starting price at 64 gig models, so it's going to cost you a lot if you start maxing that out. Nope. I ordered mine this morning. But uh, how many card slots do you think it has? Yeah. Let me explain what I ordered, though. What? Well, I did it different. So the, one, the phone that's in my pocket is from Apple from the last launch that they let me use, borrow to review. Uh, it was due back in December. I still have to return it, but I've never been on the Next Up program, which is where after 12 months of paying your the the same thing yeah. for you leasing can, it, what was that? You're basically leasing, leasing it. it. You're yeah. leasing yeah. it, mm-hmm. and then you get a new one every year. And because what what I'm tired of worrying and thinking about it every year. And I'm also I bought the last one, the Seven Plus. I'm tired of like buying it, and yes, you can buy it and then sell it for like eight hundred dollars on eBay. But every time I tried selling it on eBay, it was a fraudulent sale. Oh, yeah. You did try. You never did sell it, right? No. 
I so forgot about why, that. Like, yeah, cool. I could sell it for 400 bucks or 300 bucks to Gazelle or something. Yeah. But I don't want to go through all that work. It's pain so in the for ass. So $56.40 a month, I will lease the damn phone, and every 12 months, I will just get a new phone. That, yep. And it's all done through the business. And you said this is what, like 650 a year or it's something? It's roughly 600 and, t- Which and change a year. Isn't that bad? If Instead you think of about spending 1200 but instead, you just always have a payment. You always have the newest phone. You're renting the latest phone, and greatest. in essence. So it's fine. So do you, what? Do you have to then, every year when a new phone comes no. out, still pre-order it and or oh. will it automatically show up? No, like, you, have to, you have to go in and pre-order it. And then you, if you've only paid for 11 months, you have to pay for that 12th month. So as long as you've paid 12 payments, you can then jump to the next, the next phone. And who are you returning the phone to? Uh, Your I'm carrier sure or Apple, right in the box. Right to Apple. I'm sure they send it to you and you have to return the other as soon as you activate the other and then... They probably hold a, the money on your card, and then you send it, and you're good. Yeah, because I'm thinking about doing the same thing. You should consider it. It's smart. I didn't want the Max, by the way. I went with just the X, uh, the, 10 X, the 10S. The, the 10 form factor is perfect. It's, it's the same, si- same size screen as an iPhone 8 Plus. Handle it one, with one hand. You don't have to have two hands. It's still hard to reach top corners. Yeah, yeah. So I couldn't imagine how large the 6.5-inch one yeah. is. I don't want that. This all sounds terrible, by the way. Yeah, I don't want a six and a half inch one <laughs> anywhere near my face, especially like right here on my cheek when I'm talking. That's what she said. Moving on. What are we moving on? You're on news, Stephen. Uh, I think we got the the big reveal, the Canon EOS, EOS, EOS. EOS. Yeah, yeah EOS. Can, Jared, have you heard about this EOS R? <laughs> Who's my that? Boyfriend, Noah. My boyfriend left me. Is that Noah? Yeah. Oh, my these are the girls in your room. Huh? Oh, you mean the girl, the boyfriend that left her? <laughs> yeah. My boyfriend left me for something called the ESOR. Have you heard of it? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't want to just regurgitate the specs here. We did a whole full preview video. We also did a full preview spec video. You guys can check it out on YouTube. It's very detailed. It's pretty long. Um, but I will just read off some of the top level specs. Like in terms of the sensor, it's got the same as the 5D4, they're saying, with the Digic 8 processor. And they claim it's a little better with high ISO, so it does go up to 40,000 now compared to 32,000 in the 5D Mark IV. Uh, it does eight frames per second in one shot, five and a half with full AF, well, and then three frames per second in tracking mode. Dual pixel AF. It's got all the standard specs that you guys are used to. Oh, so God. check it out. Check out that full preview. Give me a good look. Give me a smile. Give me a smile. That was a smile. Nailed it. No, oh, I. I, uh, I wish we had this HDMI out so we could see it on the screen. <laughs> we didn't think about that. So uh, this is the EOS R. If you haven't seen it yet, when in our, our videos, this is what it looks like. This yeah. is a fifty-one point two beast what, of a lens. What Canon did right, well, with the launch, <laughs> is nothing because we hated the fact that they didn't give us any information before the launch. But very tough to do a preview video at freaking four a.m. Stephen was up till four in the morning editing it. I woke up when he was done from my nap so that I would post it when he went to bed and we got it right out. That was what our goal was. Well, and then we, yeah, we went to bed at, I went to bed at five and then I had to wake up at seven for the next day to shoot all day. That was a long night. Yeah. But so, at least you guys had to, you were in the same bed, so it was, it wasn't Oh, we weird. cuddled for sure. Yeah. We, uh, no, Canon paid us enough, so much money that we had each had a room. We had the oh. suites, right? Oh. On the top no, floor? We didn't have, we didn't have a suite. <laughs> no. I thought you guys um, were spooning while he was editing. So I what I was really happy with that Canon did well, one, I was pissed off at the specs, and I wasn't happy. That's weird. If I was basing it off the specs, I didn't think it was a good camera. Mm-hmm. Then when you actually put the damn thing in your hands, and you use it as a camera, and you start shooting, you realize that you can get some fantastic results, because a camera in the right person's hands, you're going to get great results. There are quirks. We talk about that in the preview. The joystick doesn't exist on the back. You're that missing is, a joystick. Honestly, my biggest gripe is no joystick. I just wish, because you have the touch-sensitive pad, which we have video of. Which you cannot select focusing points with. We, we all assumed that you could in the beginning, but you cannot. Well, I, I didn't ever assume that. but uh, I did, because it's right where the joystick would be normally. It's close to where the joystick would be. It's very close. Because the joystick normally would go right here where the thumb Correct. is. Yeah. But I, I, I think they need to put a touch-sensitive pad here. Instead of a joystick, and allow you to like pressure sensitive, like the 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 eraser on an IBM ThinkPad. I think that would be really cool to be pressure sensitive, and you could change the speeds and go really fast. That would be, or just or a trackball, like an old mouse. I'm just kidding about the trackball, <laughs> but that would be funny. 
The, but what Canon did right is they launched with actual glass. And what I mean by that is this is a 51.2. I don't count the 24 to 105. It's a nice range. It's a nice video lens. It is. It's got IS built in, which means you don't have IS, uh, IBIS in the body, which is stupid. The second I heard IS, I'm like, there's no IBIS. Yeah, you, you pointed that out. Yeah. And you that also pointed out what's that third ring on the lens. And we talked about that. So the third ring is Actually, a, we missed that in the preview yeah. video by well, accident. You can control aperture. You control shutter speed. You can control... It's basically your exposure white triangle. White balance. Yeah, there's only three or four things you can set to that, which I do wish there was more functionality. I found myself personally hitting it by accident. You have two ways to set it. You can simply just turn it whenever you want, or you can hold a button and turn it. But I feel like that just... Yeah. There's no point at that. I, I, I find no use for it myself. I liked it for video work, but you, you for know what I photography, should do, Steven? I'm not sure if I would use Why it. Why don't I praise the dial on here, you know, and then rip on the Fuji? <laughs> so don't tell anybody. <laughs> this is the greatest dial ever on this. I, I just love having rings. Well, you love on physical my dials. Physical rings yeah. on my cameras and my lenses, like the Fujis. I will say the lens feels great though. With and the they, rings and everything. Then they came out with a twenty eight to seventy. F2. My favorite. Which I wish it was 24 to say 60 or 65. I would have been more happy with wider. I know you wanted a little See, longer, I'd rather have the long end. But that's an F2. That's a great lens. Now, where Nikon gets upset is me busting on an F18, 35-18, and their 24 to 70 F4. If they had a 24 to 105 F4, maybe that would have been a little better, or a 24 to 120 like they used to, that they have on the, the camera. I just think that they did a Can Nikon did a terrible job of coming out with the right glass at the beginning, and Canon did a much better job by launching with two really nice pieces of glass, though they didn't go much into their roadmap. Now, I think one of the issues, too, with uh, back to focus points, is when you're shooting vertical, how do you, you can't really use the screen, the touchscreen, to actually use the touch and drag AF. So it, it's a very odd way to adjust focusing points because your thumb naturally rests here, and you're kind of at that top corner, and you can barely move those focusing points. You're just at the screen, which is rough. You know what sucks? What? Oh, I mean, I just got an interesting text. From who? I went on a date last night. <laughs> it was a good date. But then when but I then tell her that she said, I'm, have you heard about the ESOR? <laughs> when I'm going live and I tell her I'm going live and then she's watching and then texts me that, oh, there were all those hot girls getting... <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Now I gotta explain that. Oh <laughs> man, Whoopsie. that's great. You know what I'm, th you know, it's it's all for show. This is just I mean, a show. Most of it was honestly mm -hmm. a joke. For most a most of, of it was yeah. a joke. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but the multi selector, Dan, you actually have a clip of how you can set the multi selector up. There's a couple different options, and I really like. Some people were like, it's useless. I personally really liked it because there's a lot of ways you can set it up and you can actually see it scrolling on the screen, how many different options you have. And you can either touch the left button, the right button, or do a slide, which I really, really like. Well, it's called the electric slide. The electric slide, yes. Boogie, so, boogie, boogie, boogie. So what I didn't like about this sliding thing is I set it to ISO thinking maybe it would be good. I don't have to change ISO that often, but my finger kept accidentally hitting it, and it kept changing. And Canon's like, oh, well, you could lock it and then press it for two seconds. I'm like, dude, by the time I press it for two seconds to unlock it, I already hit this function button right here and turn this dial, and I'm done. Yeah, I agree. I think you're pretty much missing the shot at that point if you, if you set it to that. Now, I did like that you can disable that, and it's always on. And I really didn't find myself hitting it too often but it was very nice to have to punch in a check focus or something like that. This, Dan, cut to me, please, is the EF adapter with the... The control the ring. The control ring. The regular control... The one without the control ring is like 99 bucks. This is 200 bucks. Uh, I don't really need the control ring, but this is, this is weather sealed. You can feel the rubber right here. Everything works seamlessly. We tracked the girl running down the beach. Do we have her running down the beach for scientific purposes, Dan? We do have clips of you shooting the girl running down the yeah, beach. Yeah, we, sh we should totally do that scientifically. It well, was for scientific for sure. reasons. Yeah, First definitely. off, I asked but the, the two models, the guy and the girl, I said, who, which one of you would like to run? Did I do that? Or am I just uh, making that You did that up? actually say that, Because yeah. I don't remember, but I think you that's did. what I did. You did. You said, I was like, to which run? one of you two would like to run? Giving them both the option. And yeah, then he yeah, raised yeah. his hand, and you said, Only no, I want to Only prerequisite. No, no, that didn't happen. No, uh, he, she cho she's like, I'll run. I'm like, all right. And then I raced her, except she beat me because... There's, there's a shock. It was only like a half a, a half a, like, 
50 yard run it was less than 50 yards so and plus it was hard to run in the sand but anyway this is the adapter i know that the rumors were talking about there may be a fi a, a pellicle mirror in here a power a pel which is basically a piece of glass that you shoot through which sounds like the dumbest thing in the world i don't know really any adapters uh, like no that. they don't yeah. this is literally i can put my finger through it and there's no problem at all see it just goes right through here there's no glass and I just don't like rumors like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I, the adapter worked really well. I, I also like the control ring with adapted lenses now being closer to the body. That's a little more comfortable for me. Instead of having to reach out my hand like that, it's now closer to the body, and I can adjust my ISO or aperture a little easier that way. Um, Do you find yourself bumping that control ring at all? Yes. I, I think I brought that up earlier. Is I found myself a lot hitting it by accident when I was shooting video, and I'd be at base ISO, 100 ISO, and then all of a sudden I'm at 320 by accident. Now, again, you can set it so you have to hit a button and then turn it, but that's mm. just too much work at that point. I'd rather just hit the native ISO button and adjust it that way. Yeah. Uh, but, so Dan, you could just run some clips of us uh, shooting with it in we'll Hawaii talk. while we're talking about it. So uh, I, that works. I think that this is a um, very good start for Canon. I think that people need to remember that Sony didn't just all of a sudden come out with an A7R3 and an A7 III and an A9. It was four years or many iterations later. And that's not to say that, I mean, food, that's not to like kiss Canon's ass or anything for giving us so much money, which they didn't do. Thank it's you. It's just really to say, realistically, there's a lot of things that have been, that are done very well in this camera. There are, I think it falls very close to a 5D Mark IV. Because when you realize that it has the same sensor as a 5D Mark IV, it's be but it's got the one card slot. They don't have full frame 4K. No joystick. No joystick. It's built very well. It feel the autofocus is tremendous. No IBIS. I, I do think that this is the start. Crack 4K, which kills me. This is the start of the end of DSLRs. Uh, I completely agree. I don't really think... You, you try to think about what are the benefits at this point... And I think that the benefits of a mirrorless camera, this is me actually saying this now after five years of hating on them because they weren't ready yet, especially with the autofocus of this. And I can't comment that the autofocus on the Nikon isn't as good yet because we had it for about an hour. We were waiting for our units to come. We were told that they're going to hopefully come early next week. We had the Nikon for about three hours, but yeah, it was, but it was you tough. Couldn't, but in not a great... We didn't get to shoot a, somebody was, running it, down the no, beach No, we were outside. rushed. We barely even got to go through the menu system. That's and why we... Yeah. That's why we didn't call it a review. Everything's a preview. Yeah, so, it was hard to even use it. So these, ca these mirrorless cameras from Nikon and Canon are close. What I think is going to have to happen is one of them are going to have... Or both of them are going to have to be do what Apple does. Apple is not afraid to kill off the old technology that is still at the top of well, its game. Well, they also force people to move on and adapt. Well, I think that's where we're at. I think you have to, yeah. I can't see DSLRs living and, and, past three years. And this is me and you coming from a heavy DSLR background. I mean, yeah. I've used Sony for the past year or two, but mainly DSLRs every day, all day. So here's what I think's about to happen with Canon. I think you're, you, you got one camera. They, I mean, they flat out said it on stage. There's more coming. I they think did. you're going to see they two, said, they two more. They specifically said this is the entry level, not professional, even though I don't know. I hate I that hate term. When, they say that, yeah. when you say not professional, I want to punch you in the face. Because Ow. if this is in anybody's hand that has a clue, you're going to get great results. They kept There's saying that it was in between the 6D and the 5D. I could kind of see that. I think it's a little more geared toward the 5D. For, to me, it's more of an advanced 5D. I think you're going to see, if I had to guess, a 50 megapixel version that's going to be like the 5D version. Like 5D SR version, you mean? No. That's the high... That's I think it's going to be something to go against a D850 or a Z7. I well, think you're going to yeah. see a 50-some megapixel sensor. 5D SR. Is that what that is? That's their high-res 5D. But it's not going to be considered high-res, being that that was four years ago. A 50 megapixel is still pretty high-res. It is, but I think you're just going to see 50 because this is 30. Yeah, I will say that 5D SR sensor is still incredibly sharp. Remember how much we could crop? Yeah. No, because I never cropped. Well, for <laughs> testing purposes, how much we could crop. You tried to get me, Steve. I did, I did. You tried to get me, buddy. <laughs> but I do want to get back on... Uh, can, I, can I say one more thing? Okay. The third camera is definitely going to be a 1D uh, X. 1D, is that what it's called, a 1DX? Yeah, uh, 1DX. it's going to be a 1DX version. I, I think uh, you're going to see a, a 24-megapixel type sensor, yeah. high-speed... 20 frames a second to go after an A9. When you were talking about the benefits of you know mirrorless versus DSLR, I think one of the things that I was worried about is 
the sensor always being exposed if, I'm go, if I go mirrorless, because I shoot in concert environments where it's either on, it could be at a festival where it's sandy and there's dust going everywhere. Or you could be on a beach shooting models. I could be on a beach, which mm -hmm. they, it was yeah, windy as hell. They put us in possibly the worst environment, and this thing was great. Uh, and I forgot to turn the camera off while I changed lenses once. One of them, yeah. <laughs> and if you keep the camera on, the sensor obviously, the shutter still flips Show up. Show us. So. Um, do I have to put the back no, on? No, just turn it on. There you go. Okay, turn it off. Oh, my God, turn it off. Come on, Steven. Steven. Stop Steven. it. Steven. There you go. Stop that's breathing on it. We don't ruined. want you to ruin another now you ruined mirrorless it again. camera. But the other thing I wanted to talk about is um, the general weather ceiling. Now, the Z7, they say, is exactly like the D850. I don't remember if they said this was very similar to it's weather ceiling. magnesium the, alloy with drip proof. Yeah, so it's like the 6D weather ceiling. But I want something like the 5D, uh, like that Z7, where you don't have to worry about it being a mirrorless camera and it could you know, get screwed with a little bit of drop of rain. So I think those two things will now finally make me be able to switch with me. You want to put that lens back on so I feel better? No, nah, I'm good. I'm going to actually just spit and leave it off the whole time. So we'll work on doing a real world review, but I don't think we're going to do the real world review yet until the, the firmware. firmware comes out. I mean, it doesn't make sense for us to do a real world review. Luckily, I'm able to open raw files because I, I have a secret way of doing that Secret. that I'm not sharing with anybody. Shh. It's legit. We put out raw files that are DNGs. Somebody's like, why did you put this out as a DNG? I'm like, do you want to open it or, or you no? You won't be able to open it. With no, the I want to complain. Well, I, Thank you. <laughs> I say that during the podcast, uh, during the, um, during the, the vlog. I, not to complain. I don't, don't want to complain. Yeah. And then I complain. But, but I, th I think holding off on that real world review for now, because the preview video, the hands-on preview photo shoot, had a lot of information, a lot of the top level things we wanted to talk about. We could have called it a review. There's more specific things we can dive deep and like really use it for a full week. We used it for about three days, yeah. uh, all day. And we went through the entire menu system. I set the whole thing up. I, that's what I loved about it is it set up just like a 5D. It, there was, everything was very familiar. I think we put out the best content on the 5D, the, sorry, the EOS R. So, yeah, like I said, I think we'll, they'll be good holding off No, I want to go into that, Stephen. I want to tell you that I think we put out the best content around it. We went there with a goal. Our goal was twofold. Do a preview video as soon as the announcement happens, which we got out right away. Crush that thumbnail. That thumbnail was... You're welcome. Crushed it. My idea to flip the screen out, and oh. you took the picture of yeah. me holding the camera... But that was the best. Th that thumbnail just nailed it. Um, and then our secondary goal was to get out a hands-on preview fairly quick, which we attempted to get out while we were in Hawaii. It's just it was so much information. Yeah, Stephen wasn't able to do that, but he got a good chunk of it done. I got half then, of it done in Hawaii. And then by Sunday, we had it out into the world. Yeah, it, it was. Uh, <laughs> we shot it almost like a real-world review, but there was. I think I came back with over an hour of footage of talking points. Oh. Wow. And then I had to do all the B-roll and insert all that. I had about four hours of footage, and I'm like, there's no way. I'm going to get this edited in six hours. So I did about half of it there, assembled most of it, and then came home and finished it up all day Sunday. And yeah, we got it out into the world, and uh, I think people really enjoyed it. I think they liked that we went in-depth for just a simple hands-on preview. Yeah. But that'll hold them over for now when we get the new firmware, which hopefully is soon. I don't think it's going to be before the launch, though. Yeah, no. They talked about a month or two. So we might have to hold on to it for a while until we do a full-on real-world review, which hopefully people will still watch by then. One of my favorite things was sitting with Canon executives and just BSing. Yeah. Asking us questions. What do we think? What do we like? What don't we like? They asked our opinion on everything. And maybe we got to influence uh, a future Canon decision. Yeah. Except for what countered that was Ken Rockwell sitting there <laughs> at the table, not shutting up about... Uh, f they, they, in this camera, they have Ken Rockwell mode. It's called KR. It's actually called, what is it called? FV. FV. It's it basically like been called full KR. auto, auto, auto. It's, it's like full. Steven took a look at Ken's camera. <laughs> what? Tell me about Ken's <laughs> setup. So <laughs> we were coming back from the hotel room. A, a fan actually stopped me, us, you. Me. And he, then he said he knew. Yeah. He said he hi. Then he said he knew Ken Rockwell. And uh, <laughs> then he punched him. Ken had a broke. Ken had a broken arm, Todd. Yeah. And three broken, three and a half broken ribs. Why did yeah, you hit him so hard? He was pretty jacked up. <laughs> he fell off his bike. Riding his he bicycle. He said he hit. He said he hit a construction zone that wasn't marked construction where they dug a hole in the street. Oh my god. He was probably busy texting. <laughs> Ken Rockwell of all people. He, need, no he needs a full auto bicycle. Yeah. But so he handed the kid the camera and he was showing him the new camera and he's in FV mode, auto brightness on the screen, auto everything, JPEG, fine, all of that. Um, 
I just thought it was kind of funny. But we were talking to him at dinner, and he just talks a million miles a second. He, it's you know what he, you fast. know what else he does? Smart he, guy. He is crazy he, smart guy. The conversation started off great. He was giving great input, and then by the end, nice guy. It, by really the nice. end, I was like, Ken, you need to shut the hell up <laughs> because at the beginning, it was like, good point, Ken. That's a really good yeah. point. By the end, I'm like, Ken, what the hell are you talking about? He sounds and, like somebody that works here. Well, you know, there's one more thing. We were having a conversation between all of us. Oh, you weren't talking about me this time. No. We were having a conversation about one thing, and then out of nowhere, Ken just changes the subject. And I stopped. I'm like, wait, Ken, did you just, <coughs> did Damn. you just, he reminded me a lot of that? you in that aspect. I'm like, I do that. That sucks. Could you imagine a podcast between the two of you? Yeah, but it'd be hey. like squirrel every five seconds. Well, Stephen, uh, thank you for asking me. Um, I shoot JPEG and I've got kids and. I Ken Rockwell. I Ken's very. That's really great, but I'd like to talk about me now. Thanks. He's, he's well, very. Yeah, I got patents, and uh, I should shoot just JPEG because JPEG is one of the best things that you could ever do because it's fully auto. You know, that's weird. Yesterday when I was eating eggs, and just you know, just to come off of what you're saying, <laughs> <laughs> that's the conversation. This is exactly how it would go. Ken. Speaking of eggs, you'll see. see what, here we go. You'll see how expensive each egg was at the Ritz Carlton. But anyway, Ken's a great guy. Like I said, extremely smart. Uh, just likes to shoot JPEG. I, I like hanging out with Ken yeah. for some time, and then he just, then he just, he's just a. a and then lot. there's the raw versus JPEG debate, well, which we had for a while at that. Well, dinner. because we we just got to a point. You got up. You got more upset. Than I, I got. Did. Well, yeah. You because Ken's very definitive in his answers, and I'm like, I don't agree with any of that. <laughs> Steven's like, no, Ken. <laughs> I wasn't no. like that. No, I was very nice until one point where I think I was like that. Then one point you're like, Ken, just shut the fuck up. I didn't say that. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. I did not say that at all, whoa. for the record. He didn't say that, but I, I, I it just it got to the point where I was like, Ken, please. Now, I, was, was, it was, I was enjoying this conversation. It was really cool, though, to see all the other YouTubers, all the other creatives there that was we see on really? every trip, pretty much. Or were you just silently wait, judging behind their back? Wait till you see the, wait till you see the, the vlog. You'll get to see what YouTubers and... and I don't even know why they're here. I never said that, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> there were yeah. some interesting choices. There were some interesting choices. Yeah. Was and, Morgan uh, Jean there? Morgan Jean should have been there. Morgan She's Jean. blowing up. <laughs> that would have been amazing if <laughs> they flew plug. her out as well. <laughs> Hi guys, it's Morgan. Today on my uh, how funny would that Hawaii be? Hawaii Hall. Todd and Morgan showed Hi up guys. as a team. <laughs> hey, hey, Jack. Today we're in Hawaii. And First we're off, Todd. Talk about she my... turns thirteen and yeah. she looks like a fu a freaking teenager now. She with does. like in like two weeks, she oh, went from being a kid to a teenager. This summer, it was this summer. She yeah. just looks like mm. a human being now. I mean, that's that, what happens when that, you go from twelve to thirteen. You turn into a teenager. I, but she looks. She's she's just like uh, like turning into a woman, not a kid. Yeah. Yep. Just yep. not yet. A, not, I am a girl, <laughs> not yet a woman. Mm. I forget what song that's that exactly from. Right. She I also got remember. the attitude to go with it. Who she does. Slightly. Oh, really? Slightly. Oh, daddy, yeah. I can run my own YouTube channel. <laughs> no, it's more so like doesn't want to talk. Like, hey, how was school? It was fine. It was all right. It was okay. I definitely was like that when I came home from school. What was it? Fine. I'm fine. What'd you do today? Nothing. <laughs> Whereas like last year I would have been like she would have been like well first first period we went to math class and then we did integers and then we did this and then now it's now it's just like integers it's what it's whatever what's an integer 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 oh integer, integer. <laughs> <laughs> shit I didn't get out of freaking algebra two oh Makes yeah, sense. Me, yeah me neither yeah. dude <laughs> I'm terrible no man I was yeah. I was like I think it really all comes down to your eyes your eyes <laughs> your eyes. Your eyes, no. your eyes. No, math. Math was fun. I enjoyed running numbers. Like when you could sit there and just. You were a bookie. Yeah, I was. Oh. A bo I was uh, Ozark. All right. Yeah, she. Ozark, Ozark is I'll getting break so your good. Leg. Todd Ozark. I haven't. I haven't watched the next season yet. Oh, all right. You should, Todd. It's really. You good. need to do yeah. that. You, anyway, can sorry, you believe we, we that? Got that off, we can got you off believe on a that they here. all died at the end? Everyone died. It's crazy. Everyone dies. It's yeah. so crazy. It's not Titanic. But yeah, I mean that's that's it for the the EOS R for now. Um, well, if you guys see, what, have any questions, so what do you think full on video? Uh, so I had this, this discussion with Jordan from DP Review, but I it's the crop, the crop and lack of ibis really really kills me. And, and, and just but how fact, is the video? I mean, to me, the video is great. I mean, it's it's Canon video. It, the quality is great. It's a one to one full pixel readout at a one point seven x crop. But 
just the fact that you can't use your full focal length of <laughs> your I, lens. I, I, I love me. Canon color. I will always love Canon color. I look. I have such an affection for Canon. Shot my one of my first movies with a Mark II. I love 5Ds. I mean, what about my video guide? I shot, yeah, I, I mean, I shot, I, I shot with a 60D. I mean, I, I love it's Canons. Focused, I love the way they look regardless. And I just feel like they handicap cameras through the, throughout the entire course on the video side. Sure, I, not video I use cameras. The word, Go buy a video <laughs> camera, sure. Todd, the word I use is crippled. Sure, either or. Now, the fact that they also <laughs> allow for true. 4K, 30P, 422, 10-bit out is pretty incredible, especially with that new Ninja 5 from Atomos, that recorder. That looks great. We actually did a test in our preview, which you guys can check out on that video. It's a C-Log, and C-Log built-in, which is a first for yeah, it was yeah, $99 that's cool. unless I mean, you're buying that's a C100. Cool. Yeah, that, that, I thought that was interesting. And when I first heard that, I was like, ooh, this is going to be a real video-centric. It's got the flip-out. They and almost got there. Again, just lack of IBIS, lack of that that freaking crop factor. Um, but the quality looks great when I shoot with it. And I mean, the autofocus is still true. The autofocus is solid. Yeah. And we were shooting through an ND filter the entire day, and it was just well, spot on. In the preview, the hands-on preview, when I walked towards the camera, even with the ND filter on, and it... I couldn't even tell it was mo ch changing focus and well, followed me perfectly. So that's the, oh, it, the thing I loved about Canon's focus, the dual pixel, is that it's such a subtle rack. It looks like yeah. a cinematic pool instead yep. of that hunting, that jittery, yep. yeah. weird. Like Sony does that sometimes, but it's pretty good. Other camera brands, though, yeah, it's an issue. I mean, you can tell me I'm wrong, but it seems like an upgraded M50 yeah, you're wrong. to me. I mean, uh, I, I, to what? It's like an M upgraded, it's like a merge between a 6D Mark II and an M50. Uh, oh, it, I mean, the M50 is a toy compared to this. It's, yeah. yeah. I, I just think the feel. Like, when you pick I mean, this I up. I mean, I played with it. Don't get me wrong. It feels great. It did? feels substantial. Yeah, before you got here, I was. Uh, I was yeah, I let him play with it a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Did you? Did you wash it when you were done? <laughs> was it sticky? It now? almost slipped out of my hands because Steven had it earlier. Yeah, exactly. But, Funny. But, I mean, it, it feels great, but it just seems like. I, I, it, I don't know. If, Spit it out. If it was the. If I didn't have a camera, maybe I'd consider it, but I'm, I wouldn't switch gears to that right now. I think if you have a 5D4, I don't think you should switch anytime soon. Yeah. I think it's essentially almost the same camera with some upgrades. Yeah, it's definitely better, in my opinion. But, but, but video-wise, you're basically getting the same camera. Yeah, unless you're shooting external out, you're basically getting the same thing. Yeah. Um, it's hard to say. If, you have a, if you're a 6D user, Mark One, I, I would definitely upgrade. Oh, yeah. 6D2, yeah. it, I think it blows it out of the water. Um, if you have an older DSLR, yes. Any current... Like 1DX Mark II, I don't know if I would upgrade just yet. No. Because the frame rate really lacks. Well, the one frame right now in, in also in the Also, the eye autofocus, I think that's great. You can see that they're slowly getting somewhere. I think if they eventually made that in continuous focus, which they promised for the firmware update. It's just the Sony is so good with IAF. Yeah, a lot of people also questioned in the preview video where we got that information from. Canon straight up told us that they're going to do a firmware update for the one shot in electronic. And, and continuous. And continuous. And for the IAF, making mm. that continuous. Yep. And then mm. some minor tweaks from there. But yeah. One card it's, slot, it's two kills It's me, certainly a look into the future. I mean, when, when, I, when I held it and I it's was close. playing around with it, I'm like, I like the redesign. I can kind of see it's, it's interesting and, and all I, that. I think you know? the ergonomics, they got perfect. I think this yeah. is the one mirrorless camera that I'm actually like, wow, that feels great. Yeah. And I know that you hate when people say, like, it feels like a Canon. It feels like a Nikon. Oh, it feels like I, a it, camera. It feels like a camera. Yeah. yeah it feels yeah, yeah. the grip is nice. There's no yep. if you have big fingers, there's no issue. It's not like a Fuji. <laughs> oh exactly. where's that helmet at? <laughs> um but I yeah, I think I next generation outside. We'll see. Will Canon give us any, any everything? Will they hold back on us? Yeah, we'll have to see. Um if you've got questions, we're gonna see you in Frover time in a matter of a couple of few minutes, minutes yeah. to answer all your questions. Uh Steven, anything you want to add before we go to Frover time? No, not really. You can follow me at S underscore Eckert on all social medias if you're interested in doing that. And Todd? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you can follow me at uh, I am Todd Wolf almost everywhere. and uh, Including when he's in Hawaii breaking up with a girl? Exactly. Cheating on Exactly. Her? And you can check out my YouTube channel. I might have something new up there soon. Maybe. Oh, you have a channel? I do. Yeah, how's that make you feel? Really inadequate. <laughs> 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 it's like, Daddy, let's go make a video about the haul I just got or back to uh, my, my school routine. Oh, no, dude, when I, when I put a video She's up, it's like it gets man. like 1,000 views over the course of like a month, and then I put a video out for her, and it gets like 50,000 views in the first week. I'm That's like, insane. Good for her, man. That's awesome. Yeah. Tweens, man. Yeah. Tweens. Now, hopefully, she, hopefully as she gets older, she'll in the teen years, she doesn't try to kick you to the side. And I know, she's like... 
Daddy, I got contacted to maybe be a sponsor, uh, uh, um, a sponsor for somebody. Um, I'll send you the info. Can you follow up on that for me? Oh. So the really the, the contact email for the YouTube channel it goes well to her? that goes to me, but people will contact her through like her Instagram directly. Oh, so gotcha. Like yeah. a DM. You yeah. may want to. You yeah. may want to. Uh, I mean, I have access to that as well. And yeah. you still yeah. edit everything for her, Todd? Yeah, 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 yeah. But it seems like she's shooting some of her own stuff now. She is. Yeah, nice. she's and and I'll steal some of those pieces. She's she's she pays attention. She's a wolf. Yeah, she pays attention. Yeah, mm. she's a what? A wolf? Oh. oh. I didn't know where you were going with that, Stephen. Yeah. Hey, Dan's still sitting over there. Falling. The, is he awake still? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> he shook his head. Nope. Hi. <laughs> All Hi. right. So I'm going to sign off. We're going to do for overtime. Stick so around. Stick around for that so we can answer all your questions or whatever you've got and check out all of those super chats because there's probably like 8 million of them. Hopefully. Uh, so I want to thank you guys very much for watching. This has been episode of Raw Talk number 250. Jared Poland, Fronosphoto.com. See ya. Bye. On Frover time. And then don't we have to clap? No. <laughs> you do not have to clap. It's live. Oh, live. So now we're coming up on Frover time. Where I can log in and... Oh, you know what I forgot to mention, too? They gave us all this white paper and all the specs from that Canon trip. I forgot to say that. Todd, what's the number we've got? Because it doesn't show it here for me. It says zero watching. Uh, we had over, uh -oh. we had over like eleven hundred at a certain point. But now it's nine sixty two. Yeah, I, I, I wasn't um, watching the numbers every second. All right, let's see. Pop out chat. Now is the time to ask those questions. Okay, so let's see what we've got. And guys, again, if you have a question, try and put it in all caps. Question first, colon, and then we'll go from there. One slot means one. Yes. One person asked Stephen that I saw earlier, and I actually was curious about this. They asked. Um, is the four is four K is the out of that camera, um, full frame four K? No, it's the yeah. crop. Both, yeah, it's it's crop in four K. Can yeah. I say so? Somebody goes the end of DSLR question mark. The mirrorless viewfinder at high ISO can be noisy, and moreover, the battery life, even with a grip, isn't as good as a DSLR. Tell me I'm wrong. I think you're wrong. Um, now, you're it, wrong. ISO, yeah, sure, it may show up noisy or grainy, but you're still getting an exact representation of what you're going to see in your image. It actually won't be as noisy and grainy as what you see. And battery life is not is a non-issue, at least in the Canon. It's an issue in the Fujis, but it's not an issue in the Canon. From what I've what I've seen. Hi, Jared. Someone should make a new Pro 120 millimeter. What would you like to see? Nikon do next with their mirrorless line? Uh, put out lenses. Just better glass, uh, a grip that has a, a, a shutter button on it. Uh, just the one issue with the Nikon release was that they kept boasting about this giant 55 millimeter um, mount, and then they came out with you know 1.8 lenses and f4 lenses, and Canon came out with f2, f1.2, although their mount is the same as their EF mount, so size-wise. Somebody goes... Can you talk about if anyone is going... No, global shutter, that's one thing we do. We need to see what that's going to take. Global shutter would answer, solve a lot of problems with the mirrorless technology. Yeah, so yeah. What's that? What's global shutter? for? You want me to get it or you want to get it? Uh, you can get into it. That's fine. So the way that a shutter... So global shutter means it's going to take a picture and do a readout of the entire sensor at once. Every pixel is being Just read at the same boom, time. boom, done. The way that it happens now is why you get scan lines is because it goes. It's just like your traditional shutter. And that's it's why you oh. get top down. Right, and that's why you get distortion. Distortion when a thing swings because uh, a guy swings because it's moving. Yep. And so instead, one readout, and that's why the A9 is is not a global shutter, but it's fast. Now currently, it, it takes an insane is amount. Is that of why power. you get the um, when you when your video, Stephen, when you're moving your camera on, why why you get that more? Why you get that bending? Is that well, of that you're talking well? about like the jelloing. Yeah, yeah. Is that exactly. why that happens? Now, too? I did notice some serious jelloing going on with the the Canon, but I'm also not shooting crazy whip pans or anything, so it didn't yeah. doesn't yeah. affect me really. So somebody asked A7 III or EOS R. So look, th this is the truth of the matter. If you have no system, you're going to have to make a decision on where to go. It, if you have Canon, you have all the glass. You stay with Canon. You have Nikon. You have all the glass. You stay with Nikon. Yeah, I agree. I think if I was starting out right now with nothing, I would probably be more interested in the A7 III lineup right now. Mm. But as an existing Canon user, I will probably continue on the Canon lineup because I have so much glass, and I don't feel like selling any of it. 
Do you generally recommend to switch now to either the Nikon or the, Ni or the Canon or the Nikon full frame mirrorless, considering that the full lens lineup will be released in about a year and a half? Well, I don't think it matters because you can get an adapter and just shoot with all of the EF lenses and all of the F lenses. Mm -hmm. I think you'll be fine. Someone just said that the audio just crap out. Probably not. Uh, hopefully it's them. fine. Yeah. Let us know, guys, if you can hear us fine. Uh, check one, two. Check, check one, two. Check, check the mic. Check. Mic check. Ooh, ooh, I got How does the mic Canon here. R4K all-eye footage mic. with its high data rate stack up against the Sony A7 III's 100 megabit a second codec? Um, I honestly kind of think that the Sony looks a little sharper because you have that 6K to 4K downsampling where Canon can is just a simple one-to-one -one readout. Uh, so I would probably say that 100 megabit a second a7 III file looks a little better. Sharp, Sharpness-wise, I prefer Canon's color all day. I do don't have to do yeah. nearly as much. Yeah. And this says, do you think the upcoming Panasonic full frame will crush them all? No, uh, I, but I don't, we don't know anything. It's, it's a rumor, but no, I don't think it's... I think maybe as a video camera, it will do well, but my question to everybody is, hey, how's all that uh, crop sensor glass, that micro four-thirds glass that you have? How's that, how's that investment looking? What's this about again? Uh, a Panasonic. The Panasonic, yeah. Yeah, we'll see if that's true. Would that would be insane. Would you upgrade from a Nikon D750 to a Z6? I mean, if it's time for an upgrade, it may make sense. The, Z, the D750 is fine. I just think that... That's you know, pretty on... Yeah, I'd say that's close. a good upgrade. Z6 all day, yeah. I'm curious how the Z6 video is, because that's going to be more on par with uh, the A7 III. Question. When you started your photography business, did you have gas? When I started my photography business, did I have gear acquisition syndrome? I thought, did you just I think have you gas? Still have I was gas. like, that, that's, that's really personal. No, I really didn't because I couldn't. Well, I mean, I would look at the big white lenses on the sidelines and be like, I want those. Yeah. But back then, I mean, new cameras came out every four or five years, mm. and I didn't know anything, so it was more just learning. We've got two comments, one about the AA filter. Uh, I also, a the low-pass filter, I'm annoyed as well that it has a low-pass filter. I wish they went Can or Nikon, the Sony route, all of that, no OLPF, but they don't. And also that 120p at 720p kills me. I really wish they had 1080p full autofocus, but they don't, just like the 5D Mark IV. No uh, upgrade. How is the ND filter adapter on the R? Yes, I meant to bring that up earlier. The drop-in ND filter is incredible. I did find it buggy for photos. For some reason, I shot locked in my white balance and everything, shot some slow shutter stuff. One was perfectly exposed, perfect white balance. The next one, completely blue. You'll see it in our preview. Uh, I'm blue. Down and I even blue. tried to adjust the white balance in the raw image after the fact, and it wouldn't let me. Hmm. So I don't know what happened. It, the sensor really read it weird. That's weird. But uh, I would love it for video. I think that's a great thing for video. You can simply just adjust that and ride that That is ND nice. Yeah, yeah, that's really nice. Uh, how, how hard is it to swap those out? And can you, you, you said you can ride... Yeah, you write the it. ND filter. The ND filter is just literally a drop-in ND filter, so you can drop it out with any other type of filter. But then much. you have circular polarizer yep. and a variable ND, and you so do saying, have a wheel. You can't have a variable in there. You can. You nice. can. Okay. The variable has a little control ring on the side, and you literally just adjust it with your finger or your thumb. So, you, but you could just yank it out, like if you're going from outside yes, to inside. Yes, it's a drop-in filter, so you can. You simply don't have to take the lens off. You just pull it out. Yeah. You Copy could just that. take it out if you don't nice. want to use it. So this was asked, um, the person that asked about lenses for the systems, you said it depends on glass that I've invested in, but what about adapters on an A7? No. I would never, right there, you don't have native adapters. Although like you have they've had years to get these adapters together. And they right. The difference between an adapter on a Sony and an adapter on a Nikon or Canon is that Nikon and Canon know their technologies, and they can talk to each other without having to reverse engineer it. The Metabones and all of those uh, types of adapters aren't made by Nikon or Canon, so they don't have the exact technology. The Canon felt just like you're putting on an EF mount. It, it felt the same with the adapter on, focus it felt the same, everything felt the same. Now, the Nikon, we noticed that you could kind of almost hear the gears moving in the lenses. There was something with the 7200. There was only the 7200. I felt a weird grind that I wasn't happy with. Maybe it was that specific lens. I don't know. I could have been. But when will we see a Nikon Z full review? Well, we don't even have a full review camera yet. Which one? The Z7. Yeah. The Z. Hopefully we'll be getting the, the Z7 Z. in the next few weeks and we'll probably do that review first. <laughs> What's the timeline for, to a Fuji X-T3 review? They have a great price for great features. I trust your honest out. I, I emailed them and asked when they can send us a unit. Comes out next week so we'll see when we get it. What's how your old, take How on? old is Dan's baby now? 
Somebody Six. wants to know. It's almost a year old. Yeah. Isn't it this it's, month? He's almost a year it's, old. What, it's what? almost a year old. <laughs> it's his birthday on like the 27th or something of September? Oh, I was close. Yeah, wow. 28th of September. Time, what's what's time, his serial time, number? Time to put him to work. What's so, his serial number, Dan? Someone asked if we're going to Photokina. We are not this year. Nah, skipping Photokina. Honestly, we don't need to. With We just went to both the Canon event, the Nikon event. They're not coming out with more stuff. We've got other events coming up, yeah. Who's winning 10-bit full frame game? I don't know. When's the next Frontos photo show? Here. No clue. That's a no clue. Uh, what if you combine the adapter with the Sigma lens? We did not have a Sigma lens on hand or any EFS glass with us at the Canon event. Um, I wish we had something to test it out, but from everyone that was there, it seemed like it worked fine, but I couldn't tell you firsthand. This is a good one. How much time, production time, does it take you guys to produce a review? Uh, a real world review? Yeah, go with a real world review. If we, uh, let's say it takes about a couple of days of testing it out, not on camera, me setting up the menu. Oh, you mean we just don't take it out right away? And <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like the Fuji X H1. X H1, I spent. You like just two don't or turn the camera on and show the camera and talk. Uh, we from set the up spec the whole list. We set up nah, the that's, whole. That's other YouTubers, not oh, us. Oh, oh, I should start doing that. Yeah, but it takes yeah. us a while to get used to it. We set our custom buttons. We shoot some samples with it, and then we actually go on plan a shoot, which could take us a week or two. And then when we're actually shooting, it takes us about a day or two to shoot the entire thing. And then about a third day for all the pickups, all the extra B-roll needed, the beauty shots of the lenses, maybe some OTFs. Uh, and then edit-wise, that's the biggest thing. Week and a half, maybe two weeks and if it's a big one. And what are OTFs? Uh, on the flies, it's like our stand-ups that we record. Jared basically the listing heads. off all the specs. The talking, talking head, head stuff. type yeah. shots. And yeah, it just it takes a long time to produce these real world reviews, but it's worth it. Because it's some of the biggest content that we produce. So we answered this already. Should I sell my 5D Mark IV to buy the Canon EOS R? No. Yes, yeah, sell everything. Just <laughs> throw it all out and buy everything I, new. I would say no. I don't think it's worth the upgrade right now for the 5D4. Again, if you're 62 or 60, lower end DSLRs, maybe. For that price, $2,300, packs a lot. I, I, and I, I agree. I think it's a maybe even then. It's a maybe. It's a maybe. It's definitely a maybe. I love this. I love this. This is funny. This is a question, but it's not. It's more of a statement. Sony spooked by Fuji. Intro announcing a new high-end APS-C next week? Question mark, question mark. No clue. We don't know about anything. Steven looked like a lumberjack. In a, Hell yes. In that's in exactly that what... I just mm -hmm. don't have a beard. Yeah. Might take so me like dope. eight more years to grow that beard. Do you think the Nikon will still develop the D500 line? They'd be stupid to, do, to continue to go down that. Well, DSLR. so the question like, is, do they come out with the, the D5? Z, Z500. Or D5 successor? Do they still keep that pro high-end DSLR lineup going? I think they're going to come out with one more full pro DSLR. Because I, I, I would say they should gradually kill out that DSLR lineup I instead of just... I think they should just kill it and have a full-on camera that replaces it. And then some. I think is, there's is still the that older demographic that's used to DSLRs. Fuck the older demographic. You know, every young person is running to Sony right now who's oh, just starting. Completely agree. So yeah. you need to give them a reason not to go to Sony. And one in a hundred million reasons are that there's all these lenses available for Nikon and Canon. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, here's a question for you, Stephen, or both of you. Is the next 5D mirrorless or DSLR? That's a yeah. great question. I think I know the answer to that. I think, I, I, think, yeah. I, I, think, I think it's up in the air. I think they are, yeah. Trying to figure out what's the future. And we, we don't know where they're going to go, but they have to decide what's the future. Do you kill it and go full mirrorless? Because in my opinion, I think the next 5D should be mirrorless. I think so too. Why? I, just, I don't see the point of... Ha because most pe a lot of people use it for video, don't need a mirror for that. Yeah. The EVF is fantastic. The autofocus is fantastic. I don't know why you would waste your time on a 5D Mark IV at this point, a 5D Mark V. I think what you need to do is, though, switch to XQD cards uh, or C CF Express in the future mm. because SD cards are not good cards. And CF cards at this point are so old. Yeah. Um, also, the, I always question, what's the naming scheme going to be on the next EOS R camera? Is it going to be like... 1R, 5R, 7R, or is it going to be R1, R5, whatever, R1 mm. Mark II? Yeah, I don't know. Who knows Five how R. that naming scheme is going to go. More volume on Jared's mic. Ooh, I got a hot mic. Mic check, mic check. Ooh, when Steven said... Um, <laughs> when Steven said, and all of that extra B-roll I heard, and all that extra beer we'll need. What's for dinner? Yeah. I don't know yet. 
Um, so we're going to wind this down in a second. 1DX Mark III as a DSLR. New telephoto EF lenses. All right. Man, there's a lot of questions. Yeah. The Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K is out of stock every store. Yes. It, it, is it a statement? No, it just means they didn't make enough of them. What, Dan? No, I won't talk right into the mic. <laughs> he's like, he's sitting there, he's going, nope. Hi, Todd. What is Morgan's YouTube channel? You sure you want to tell people that? I already told him before. When she first launched it, it's Morgan Jean. Morgan Jean. Hi, guys. It's Morgan. That's really what I she mean, said. I certainly wouldn't watch it unless you're into, like, child fashion and what's in your backpack and what you do at 13. I mean, it's time for a new dance routine video, though. Uh, the next one's going to be a fall fashion book, look book. Oh. Uh, yeah. Someone asked, does the ND filter have to be from Canon or any company filters can be added? I think it's proprietary at first, but I guarantee thir there's going to be uh, third-party ND filters and stuff coming out. I'm sure they w there will be. Uh, the one thing I didn't like, too, is that their USB-C charger on this camera only works with their proprietary adapter. It's recommended. The guy kept saying recommended. But what I, from my, what I heard is that other people tried their chargers and it didn't work on any chargers. I don't think it's such a big deal to work. I don't give a shit about charging my battery in the camera. Uh, it's more for traveling for me. It's nice not to bring 30 batteries with me. So here's and what I can I, always have that in my pocket. Sorry. I think, uh, I think what you're going to see is around the photo uh, PPE time, which is like March, I think you will see another Canon camera coming out. And then I think we're probably nine, ten months away from seeing possibly a 1DX Mark II size camera. I just The way that I look at the industry is like Sony has had five years, six years head start to get somewhere. They've iterated many times because their cameras flat out sucked when they came out first. Yeah, the Mark IIs were pretty solid. The Mark II started to get good, but the, the three, the A7 III, the A7R III, and the Crushed. A9 are real cameras. Yeah. Full-on real cameras, uh, except there's still some pro. There's still some them. weird things, but that's every camera. There's no perfect camera. But I think Nikon and Canon, have a, they're in a good place. They just need to not do stupid shit and move on and just get that glass out. The question is, will Nikon, did they already release all of their cameras or will they be announcing other cameras in the next few months as well? You know, Canon could have done the same thing and announced the development of another camera and not released it yet. But did they choose just to announce it later on and well, it's already ready or? Do you know what I didn't like about the presentation? Which Remember one? how they Canon kept the, or the Nikon? Canon. When they kept saying that this isn't replacing your DSLR, it's going to work next to it. That is just a cop out. That is a cop out to write that because Yes, this could re this replaces a 6D Mark II. It renders a 6D Mark II uh, worthless if you were to buy one. If you had to decide between the two, I'd buy this all day long, and it makes you think about a 5D Mark IV. I get why they did it. Why they did it? Because they're they are introducing everyone into the mirrorless world for the first time, and they don't want to completely screw them over and say throw out your DSLR. Yeah. So it's understandable. Oh, I, got, I got you, but I just think somebody needs to apple it. Uh, yeah, just apple it because That's what I don't think Sony's pretty much been doing. <laughs> I was so surprised about the autofocus that I didn't even notice the autofocus, that it just worked. That was the main thing. And the EVF, look, and I said in the video, it felt like I was looking right through a, a, an optical viewfinder. Yeah. Um, Jordan Drake, is he watching? Because I see some people saying hi. What's well, up, Jordan, if you are watching? What up, Canada? You want to call today, guys? Uh, yeah. yeah, I'd say so. So we're going to put up that end <laughs> Jordan screen. said, can we keep borrowing Steven? Yeah, sure. I'll Just be uh, pay his salary. I think in their review for the uh, <laughs> I'll charge you per minute <laughs> for the new camera. <laughs> oh, people are asking about the GoPro you used for the trip. What kind? It's a, uh, it's a five. Just the GoPro Hero Five. We didn't buy the six. We probably won't buy the Shot six. Shot flat on the GoPro and just and I swam post with it. And yeah, we swam with it. I always take that stupid cover off the front lens though, because that really crushes. But we the, needed it for swimming. We needed it for swimming to be waterproof. Yeah. Yes, the D3S is still usable. It's not the best in the world anymore, but it's still usable. Yeah. Uh, all right. Dan? Wrap it up. We're going to wrap it up. So how does this work? I say something, and then you put that up? I think Todd will get to that slide oh, in Todd a has that slide? Whenever you're ready, Todd. All let's right, wrap guys. This so up. thank you for listening to For Overtime. We will be back. If you missed this episode and you're just tuning in now, the replay will be up right away, Very basically. Soon. Yep. Uh, as soon as uh, it's processed on YouTube's side. 
So I want to thank you guys very much for watching Raw Talk as well as for overtime. We will hopefully see you next week, which is Friday. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Thanks and that. put the screen up in in three, <laughs> in two, and there it is. Check out last week's Raw Talk over here on the left. You got more Frono's photo goodness over here. You got subscribe right in that that vicinity, like right in the middle. Ooh. Yeah. And uh, Dan's gonna count us down from the 20 seconds. He's about to put his hand up in the air. Anyway, there it is. Five, four, three, two, one. Bye.